Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two Pacific culture individuals from northeastern Kazakhstan who lived in the early Iron Age. Let's move on to the sample ZE6B. Uh, it's a woman, she's got hazel or brown color eyes, she's got a snob shaped nose and she's got brown hair. According to my eye shape predictor tool, she's got East Asian eye shape, which is why I depicted her looking quite East Asian in the picture, uh, in the AI-generated picture. Uh, and for my hair shape predictor too, she's predicted to have straight hair, but it's not very reliable. It was only based on three SNPs, only three genotypes, not a very reliable hair shape prediction. Uh, but she has BH1, she has blue eye haplotype 1, she's heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 2, uh, which means at some point in her lineage there was an ancestor with uh, two derived variants in BH2, which means probably lighter, co lighter color eyes. Her genotype for BH3 and BH4 cannot be determined from the file, so we don't know uh, whether or not she has blue eye haplotype 3 and 4. Uh, she is heterozygous for EDAR, which means one East Asian EDAR allele and heterozygous genotype semi-Asiatic facial traits. And based on her genotypes in SLC24A5, ASIP, KETOG, and SLC45A2, she probably has light color skin. Now let's move on to IS2. This is our second individual. Uh, this file is a lot lower in quality, that's why I'm not showing you the eye shape and the hair shape prediction. Uh, the eye shape prediction, I'm just going to voice it right now, it was um, European, Estonian, and for hair shape prediction it was straight, but uh, not very good result because it was only based on two SNPs for both of these, so I don't really feel uh, this needs to be shown. Now, he's predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center, blonde hair and Greek shaped nose. Uh, he does not have East Asian EDAR mutation, so he's quite West Eurasian in terms of phenotype, and he has blue eye haplotype 1 and 2 and 3. Very surprising stuff. He's actually uh, homozygous for BH3, which is something you would expect to see maybe in the Scandinavia, not so much in Iron Age Central Asia, right? Very interesting stuff. Definitely very light color individual. Um, and he's got, based on his genotypes in SLC45A2, IRF4 and ASIP, he's got a white European skin tone as well, so he's quite light in pigmentation and uh, in this image you can see on the screen, this is what I believe he looked like. Now let's move on to ethnicity. When it comes to IS2, which is our kind of Nordic looking guy, he's uh, quite similar to Bissermians, Tatars and Udmurts. And Bissermian, in case you don't know who that is, this is a group of uh, Udmurt speaking people who live in the northwest of Udmurtia. Um, it is also the origin of the Russian word Basurman, so in Russian sometimes when we deal with somebody who is a foreigner we say, oh Basurmanian, or we say like, uh, it's it's a derogative uh, word, but it actually has origins from these Basurman people, the etymology of the word comes from these people, that's what we were we were referring to them as the foreigners and we sort of turned it into a little curse word. Uh, ZE6B on the other hand is most similar to Karkalpaks, Nagais, Uyghurs, so uh, ZE6 is a lot more Eastern, a lot more East Asian admixtured than IS2. Both of them are pretty Southern, you can see both of them score Tajik, mostly Tajik plus something else. For example, IS2 is getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus Finnish uh, and plus actually a little bit of Shore, which is a uh, sort of East Asian looking people as well. So IS2 has some East Asian admixture, but ZE6B has more East Asian admixture by far. 60% Tubalar plus 15% Han. Uh, so ZE6 is actually majority East Asian. And we see this tendency with the MDLPK16 calculator as well. We see IS2 is not scoring all that much Siberian, only 13% Siberian, and really not a lot of East Asian admixture. Um, very little East Asian admixture, in fact. Whereas ZE6 is scoring a lot of Siberian, a lot of Southeast Asian, uh, and even even some Amerindian. Uh, in fact, in fact, in ZE6B, the Siberian plus Southeast Asian plus Amerindian, that's the majority component. That's the biggest component. If you unite that together, that's the biggest component in the ancestry. Whereas in the case of IS2, I, I the biggest component seems to be Northeast European or STEP. Actually, STEP is the biggest component here. So IS2, uh, is still most similar to Bashkirs and Udmurts, um, who are partly East Eurasian, who do have a little bit of East Asian uh, admixture, but they are still mostly West Eurasian individuals, whereas ZE6B is most similar to Karakalpaks, Kazakhs, and Kyrgyz, who uh, you can look it up on Google, they look very 
East Asian very, um, you know, epicanthic folds, all those kinds of traits that we associate with East Asians. With the Eurogenes K13, we see this image where ZE6 is closest to Kazakhs and Uyghurs and Kyrgyz, once again closest to uh, these kinds of the more East Eurasian looking Central Asians. Central Asians with the most Turkic and the least Iranic admixture. Whereas IS2 is most similar to Tatars, Nagais, uh, Afghan, Turkmen, so various, even Tajiks come up at the fourth place and even Chuvash come at fifth place. So IS2 is all around uh, more West Eurasian, more European like, more maybe even more Middle Eastern like in admixture. Yeah, more, more Middle Eastern like as well because you can see IS2 is scoring. 6% uh, more West Asian than ZE6B. So more European-like, more Middle Eastern-like, less East Asian-like. This is what they score with PunDNA LK12. Uh, pay attention to the Oracle. You see ZE6B. Altaians show up at number 3. Line number 3 is Altaians. Now, can you try and find Altaians on IS2's Oracle? You can't because they aren't there. IS2 is so distant from Altaians they don't even show up in the first 18 places. However, IS2, look at line number 3, Tajik Pamiri. Do you see Tajik Pamiris anywhere on ZE6B? Well, yeah, you do, but you see them on 11th place. So ZE6B is just overall a lot more similar to Altaians and East Asians, whereas IS2 is more similar to various West Asian and European groups as well. Um, now, IS2, you can see, is scoring 27% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, compare that to ZE6B, who's scoring 15% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, big difference, right? 27 versus 15. And IS2 is scoring 28.7% European Hunter Gatherer, whereas ZE6B is scoring 13.7% European Hunter Gatherer, big difference, right? 13.7 versus 28.7, big difference once again. But uh, this calculator, which is Ancient Eurasia K6 by Gedrosia DNA, is the best calculator at showcasing this big difference, this mountainous difference between these two samples, um, who are both from the same culture and from the same time period, but are just extremely, extremely different. Look at Z6P scoring 51.8% East Asian and compare that to IS2 who is scoring 21.7% East Asian. That's more than two times more East Asian admixture. That's like, um, that's like the difference between Turkmen and Kazakh. Literally, that's the difference between Turkmen and Kazakh in terms of uh, like racial components. It's a major difference. And Z6B is closest to Uyghurs, Hazara, Kyrgyz, who are extremely East Asian in, in appearance, whereas IS2 is actually most similar to Step Iron Age, which is exactly what it is. Uh, it's Iron Age Step. So IS2 is the one that's actually most similar to what you would expect these Pacific culture individuals to be most similar to. Now we're going to be taking a look at their traits with my trait predictor that's on my website. Um, I made some changes to it. As you can see, uh, I made a little, nice little um, design for the background, like this DNA strand and my face. Um, this is actually my profile picture on YouTube. So I, I kind of made some changes to my website design, to my genome analyzer tool design. But we're going to select and we're going to start with IS2. We're going to start with this sample. This is the man, this is the male sample. Uh, he's got GG genotype in this comet variation, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, he's got TG genotype in this DRD3 variation, which is a typical genotype associated with a slightly lower risk of OCD and intellectual disability. Um, and he's got CC genotype in this variation of DRD4, which is a typical human genotype and leads to decreased risk of schizophrenia. What about anything else? No, nothing else. Wait. Yeah, nothing else. So this is just a very low quality file. Um, it was, uh, you've seen it was only six megabytes, so that's why I kind of started with it. It's a, it's a small file. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the variations that we really look for, but what about the, uh, what about the bigger file? Well, we're gonna find her. By the way, the, the fact that I have to like look up, look this up in my folder, it's kind of ridiculous. I was supposed to make this video two weeks ago, but I just um, I just converted the samples, I got them in 23andMe format, and I completely forgot about them. I was like, uh, I, it's like I, it's like in my mind, I was I thinking I was thinking I did it. In my mind, I thought that I completed the work, but I actually haven't. I never did the work. I never made this video, and 
right now somebody on YouTube has reminded me, hey, um, you wanted to make this video a long time ago and you still haven't posted it. I'm like, oh my God, I, I was, I was supposed to do this. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this now. Um, ZE6B is the woman and she's got TT genotype in this MAOA variation leading to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme and slower breakdown of dopamine, thus higher dopamine levels and certain advantages in attention tasks. So this is kind of the MAOA warrior versus warrior gene and she's got warrior genotype here, meaning higher uh, dopamine levels. Uh, GG here, which means no derived, no golden variance in drd 2 pro variance in pro variation. Well, nothing surprising here because... Um, East Asians, which is what she is mostly, tend to not have any no go learner variants in Pro Frenzy Pro. Uh, okay, GG here, meaning less dopamine D2 receptors and decreased risk of schizophrenia. Wow, interesting. So typically, you would see um, GG here coming together with AA in this, in this variation, but in this case, that's not the case. In this case, you see GG here coming together with GG here which kind of contradict each other. So it's very interesting. I should maybe do, this is giving me an idea to do maybe a study into these two variations and find any phylogenies that exist between them, like what kind of phylogeny exists between these two variations, because there is a phylogeny in every gene. Uh, in every gene, there is a couple of variations that come together. Uh, there's linked regions, there's haplotypes in every single gene that's out there. So you could build anything for anything. It just takes a lot of research. And I could probably do this work, but I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like uh, with the trends, with my analytics, I don't feel like it would do too good in terms of views. But I can still do the work if I get really bored. Um, CC here in DRD1, which is the typical genotype for most humans, and leads to a slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. AA here, which leads to a higher likelihood of autism. CC here, which leads to higher odds of OCD and intellectual disability. AG here, which is very interesting, which means the individual is heterozygous. Oh, I misspelled it here. <laughs> I spelled heterozygous. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the European lactose persistence mutation, and it's probably not, not lactose intolerance. So AG here uh, is quite interesting. So she does have the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, interesting stuff for the empathy gene OXTR, AA in this variation, which means two sociopath variants, and GG here, which means once again two variants for lower empathy. So um, quite sociopathic based on her genotype in OXTR, uh, which is nothing nothing too surprising because like once again she, she's mostly East Asian in ancestry, and East Asians tend to have uh, the sociopath gene in OXTR for diabetes. Uh, she's got CC genotype here, which leads to a sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. So definitely doesn't have type 1 diabetes. And this is kind of the, the main, uh, type 1 diabetes is the main kind of diabetes that I'm really focusing on. Uh, because type 2, there's, there's some um, variations and there is variants that make you more susceptible to type 2 diabetes. But at the end of the day, it's something you can control. Type 2 diabetes is preventable. You can choose to eat healthier, you can choose to exercise more, and you can avoid type 2 diabetes even if you have the genetics for it. But type 1 diabetes diabetes is just unavoidable. If you have it, you have it since you, you were born. Um, no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation and lower risk of Alzheimer's here. So probably is not probably doesn't have Alzheimer's. Uh, miscellaneous section. This is something I just added today. Uh, so this this video was the first video where you will see the miscellaneous section. There is, I mean, yeah, this video will be the first video where you will see the miscellaneous section in action and drug response and albinism, all of this stuff. Uh, so for miscellaneous section, she's got CC genotype here, which leads to slightly higher cranial size and 1% higher IQ. TT here, which means no fat gene variants in FTOs. Uh, this variation basically for atypical traits panels and albinism cc here which means not a carrier for albinism tt here which means not a carrier for albinism cc here which means once again not a carrier for albinism and cc here which means once again not a carrier for albinism so it's just, it seems that uh, this individual is not albino uh, so that's pretty much all there is to it thanks for watching my video until the end leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and um well, what can I say? You can download these samples, both of them in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.